If you thought credit card debt was bad, just wait until you see this. It got a whole lot worse. If you look at what's going on, there is a credit crunch. Borrowing has now been restricted, particularly on the commercial side. This is a warning indicator and we've got to pay attention. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. I'm going to show you some articles today. I'll give you the charts. I'm going to look at what's going on with the central banks so that you know, no matter where you are around the world, what's happening in terms of credit in terms of debt. This is what the system is built on. People today, they still have this idea that a system which was in existence many, many decades ago operates today. No, debt is money today. Money is debt. That's the system they built. I didn't decide that, but I can play with that system and understand it. Do you realize this? Debt is money. When they actually create a loan, they pull this from thin air into existence and deliver that to you. I mean, that's wild. That's crazy. But that's the way it works. Let me show you something. I need to bring it up to you. And you could see this. Fed is about to find out if it could afford to pause rates. Core inflation seen rising at still concerning pace. We look around the world to the other central banks. You will see first, Underlying U.S. inflation seen as persistent. Inflation is still too hot. They know that even using their own metrics. Okay, we'll use that metric that is so like so much smaller than is realistic. How many things do you have to purchase, whether that's a service or a product that is way beyond the statistics they show? Please, please let me know whether it's something as simple as maybe some bread or some produce, or it's something like your oil change or, you know, any, anything, whatever service I have to buy, I look at the price tag and I think this is way more than it was, you know, a year ago or five years ago, whatever the case is, things have gone up astronomically. It, it's just unbelievable. And there are different reasons for that. There could be some shortages. It could be because of labor. It could be because of the products costing more. I know personally, for me, I've experienced a lot when we're looking at manufacturing products. I look at that and with steel, for instance, I experienced, you know, an increase. There's no question. Okay. So the product was in this example, I'm thinking of it was $22 to manufacture. Um, let's say 2020 around that time frame and or maybe 21 and then now it's $24 and 50 cents. So that's still it's a significant jump. No question about it. Um, and that's just one example. Now the fees that Amazon charges uh, has gone up. So all of my business dealings have increased in price. So that means ultimately what that means push it onto the customer. Okay, two and a half dollars two and a half dollars to the customer. That's not fair, but that's the way it goes or else there is no profit. That's that's the simple matter of fact. Why is this all taking place though? Why? Well, it's because of the central banks. What the central banks have done is they've created an easy monetary policy that in effect goes here and pushes up the prices of everything. How could that be? Well, of course, when you devalue the currency, that's exactly what occurs. Let me show you. I'll explain it. Here we have it, inflationary pressures. Interest rates in Australia are still well below the inflation rate. If you're not willing to bring your interest rate above or at least at the level of that inflation rate, and that's core inflation, by the way, you are not going to push that down fast enough. It's just a simple matter of fact, okay? Traders see rates near 5% in the UK with inflation in the double digits. Price pressures in the UK are not subsiding as quickly as hope. Look, if you're not going to do this, if you're not going to take care of it, if you don't mean business, well, then why are you bothering? Let's be honest. If I was working with somebody hand in hand, as I do, and that person tells me, yeah, you know what? For instance, I think everybody should be exercising. Okay. So that's part of the regime that I have for people. And I say, uh, okay, and you're going to exercise every day. If that's going for a walk, maybe lifting a little bit of weights, whatever the case is, and you tell me, I didn't, I didn't have time today. I'm going to tell you, you better get your you know what in gear or else we don't have any business together anymore. Okay. You've got to be tough in this life. If you're not tough, 
you get pushed aside, you get pushed down, and you end up at the back of the line. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be at the back of the line. I want to be at the front of the line. I want to be at the front of the class. I want to make sure that I get what I deserve. Do you agree with me? If so, put it in the comments below. Share your opinion. Okay, there's more in here. A lot of these central banks, you could see there's a few coming in including the UK that are making their decisions. So we're going to find out, is it more increases or are they going to hold? I think in many of these cases here, they're going to continue to increase interest rates. That means tighter monetary policy right now at this time. And so what does that mean? Well, the world, in the financial world, they're expecting cuts. Can you believe this? Bond traders bet on the biggest Fed shift in decades on credit risks. Frenzied wagers on a July rate cut followed this week's hike. Gauges that have been safely ignored for years are getting attention. So we're going to see what these traders do uh, and the investors, how they put their money in in the next little while. But they believe interest rates will be cut because of a credit crunch. And speaking of credit, U.S. consumer borrowing climbs on surge in credit card balances. Crazy. Revolving credit outstanding rose $17.6 billion. That's like credit card debt and so on. Total consumer borrowing increased by the most in four months. An absolute surge. You got to see this. I mean, it's crazy. Unbelievable. Where people are supposedly doing well. You can see the chart right here. They're supposedly doing well. I hear it all the time. Hey, look at the stock market. Everything's fine. Does that represent, a, you know, an okay consumer? Yeah, they're going to buy. People are going to buy until they can't, like, until somebody cuts up their credit card, they're going to use it to the absolute maximum. The balances that people have on their credit cards continue to expand. Now, I think people should have a credit card. People should utilize that credit card, but people should pay down before the company goes in. So you get kind of that 30 day window where you can essentially not have to pay. But before that 30 days, you got to pay that off. You've got to take care of this because the interest rates are 20 percent. You can't keep that going. Now, the balances people have are approximately six thousand dollars. $6,000 at 20%, you do the math, the longer you stretch that out for, the bigger the burden is. So imagine you're buying a TV. In many cases, let's just say $1,000, you're actually paying $2,000 for that TV. Now people say, yeah, you know, I'll pay it off earlier, but for a lot of people, it just, it just doesn't happen. Senate Republicans oppose vote just to raise the US debt ceiling and push for other priorities. So now what's happening here is there's this back and forth. Oh, no, 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 no. We're not going to just going to increase the debt ceiling. No, no, no. We're not just going to do temporary thing. No, no, no. Back and forth, back and forth. And so the debt continues to increase and there's that ceiling there. What's going to happen? It will be decided, of course, at the last minute. And that means there's going to be potentially parts of the government that start to shut down as they deliberate back and forth. Oh, what are we going to do? Oh, no. We'll see. We'll see what goes on. Okay. Warren Buffett says Berkshire is cautious on the banking sector. So at the annual conference for Berkshire Hathaway, anybody who has even one share, I believe, is allowed to go. And so a lot of people, they line up and they want to see Warren and Charlie and, um, you know, what do they say? What is the cause for concern? The banking sector uh, looks very concerning uh, in here. Basically, what they say is not nobody's ever going to lose their money. You don't have to worry. It doesn't matter if the FDIC is not going to cover it. Somebody's going to cover it. This is not an issue, but there is risk. OK, we want to be there if the banking system temporarily even gets stalled in some way. It shouldn't. I don't think it will, but I think that it could. Part of the reason for that is incentives in the banking regulation are so messed up. That's what he's saying here. So anyway, I think it is, of course, a problem that they don't want to acknowledge within the banking system because they say, hey, everything's fine. Don't worry about it. But we know. We know that's not the case. Bank borrowing from the Fed falls sharply after First Republic sale. This is from a few days ago. First Republic had been a big borrower from the Fed. And then, you know, you, you just see that 
um, the way that the Federal Reserve came out there, ba the balance sheet had expanded uh, quite to quite a degree. And now we can see that that has changed somewhat. Does that mean that the Federal Reserve's balance sheet has shrunk dramatically? No, but uh, what we saw in that big surge upward has now come down. Okay, so it's still important to see where we go here because they are weaning off their treasuries. They are weaning off their mortgage-backed securities uh, that has been declining, but everybody believes that that's just going to stop at some point and they'll have to buy them all up again. It's, it's crazy to see how the, devia the devaluation of the US dollar and all currencies that are taking place right now around the world. Commercial real estate debt machine is broken down. There's going to be a lot of carnage in the San Francisco office market. And of course, I mean, think about it. When you go to expand to this degree, how in the world are you ever going to get out of it? I mean, really, you see debt ex expanding. There's the cause for concern, of course, at this time has been where are we going to get the, the consumers, because just like with regular, um, let's say residential real estate on the commercial side, look, you've got 50 story towers, 20 story towers, 10 stories that are empty. They're actually empty because you had one company that was leasing in the case of Microsoft, they were leasing the whole building and then they just say, everybody's working from home. And so what does that do? You've got a lot of debt on these properties. Do you think these buildings that you see downtown are paid for? Of course not. It's just debt. And then what happens 10 years later? Where the, the, did the debt get paid down? No, it's refinanced. It's restructured. It's never paid. It's just debt. That's what I'm trying to explain to you. Debt is money. They are able to pull money out as a, as a, you know, a real estate investor. If you have a property, okay, you could say, I want to pay that property down entirely. And some people would because they want things to be safer. They want that stability. But what other people do is some people call it the Burr method, B-R-R-R, -R, that they would actually take that property, buy that property, renovate it, rent it out, and then refinance that property. Now, why would they want that? It's because they've got a tenant paying down that debt and they pull out the equity from that tax-free, tax-free income. And that is an advantage that real estate has over all other asset classes. But of course, that's a big problem as increase in interest rates start to get more serious. That's a problem because you can't do that refinancing. And when you do, you're doing it at a much higher level and there's no way that that's going to you know, balance out when you look at your income coming in and the expenses as in the debt. That's a concern. That's what's going on right now with commercial real estate. And you see how these things connect together. I hope I made myself clear, clear as mud. All right. Well, I think that it's important to check out uh, my playlists on my YouTube channel as well. You definitely want to check that out because it's going to explain a lot in depth. You want to see that? Definitely take a look. I'll see you there. Take care.